I think you need to adjust the lighting. <laughs> hey everyone. What are you doing? Let's go to the shop. Take 15 rolling action. <laughs> <laughs> ah, my spider. Spidey crawling like a monkey. What? Let me take a break. Sean, no time to rest. Why? The Moto G5 package is here. What? So soon? This is not fair. We are just wrapping up the Moto G5 Plus shoot. Uh... Sean? Sean? What's up guys, Section here back with another video. I just finished the Moto G5 Plus review and here is Motorola dropping another device, the Moto G5, to make your purchase decision even more confusing. Haha. <laughs> No worries, here is my full review on how the device is to help you decide if this is the one for you. Also don't forget to check out my review on the Moto G5 Plus. I will leave a link at the end of this video. Let's get started. Here's the box. The G5 is priced at 11999 While I open it, can you hit that red subscribe button below this video if you already haven't? It for sure encourages me to produce more awesome videos, which you guys get to watch for free. Alright, here we have the Moto G5. Let's get to it in a bit. We have the charger called Rapid Charger. Yeah, yeah. Learn how to name things from Motorola. <laughs> a basic pair of earphones, a micro USB charging cable, a couple of manuals, and the battery. Yes, this device has removable battery. That's about it. Here is the Moto G5, the design, typical Moto style and yes, is almost the same as its elder brother, the G5 Plus. The back is metal, however, top, bottom and sides are plastic. Comes in two colors, gold and grey. Well, for me, after trying both colors, I feel grey is a bit more premium. Feels light, solid and for sure grippy. Here is a quick spec chart for your reference. To the front, we have the 5 megapixel front camera, earpiece and sensors. As expected, there is a LED notification light which is by default disabled. Crazy. The earpiece also has a single speaker hidden in it, which is below average. The display is a 5 inch Full HD where the G5 Plus had a 5.2 inch. Not a heaven and earth difference, however very easy to use with one hand. Color reproduction seems to be good. It's bright enough and crisp. Indoor and outdoor visibility is also good. Touch is super responsive. Comes with Gorilla Glass 3 to protect from accidental drops and scratches. Nothing major to crib on display but note if you move from a 5.5 inch device, for sure you will find it small. <laughs> One highlight is it has water ripple and nano coating that can help this device from minor water splashes and accidental water spills. But no, it is not waterproof so don't drop or dip it in water. Down we have the primary microphone and the fingerprint sensor which is super fast and most of the times accurate. Works with little moisture and oil too. Also doubles up as a navigation button, swipe to move right, left, tap for home etc. No physical navigation keys, they are on screen. To the right we have the volume control and power button. To the left, nothing. Bottom we have just the micro USB charging port. Top, the 3.5mm audio slot. The audio output via this is good. Tested with my Sony ZX110. Moving to the back, we have the secondary microphone for noise cancellation and a 13 megapixel camera with LED flash. Does have electronic image stabilization which is by default enabled. You can also turn it off, which I'm sure you won't. <laughs> the camera app is plain vanilla, simple as it can be. You do get manual controls to play with. On features, you get auto HDR, panorama and slow motion. No fancy stuff, filters etc. In case you want fancy stuff, try third party apps such as Candy Camera etc. Video recording goes up to 1080p with the rear and front. The camera does well in good lighting conditions for photos. Though not super excellent like the G5 Plus, it's good with indoor and outdoor shots. In low light, it's decent but lacks details. For low light selfies, you can use screen as flash. 
Coming to video is above average. And yes, it picks up background noise a lot while recording videos like the G5 Plus. Hope Moto comes with an update soon to fix that. Focusing was okay, many times had trouble to focus quickly. Here are some sample clicks to give you an idea on how the camera performs. Currently I'm recording this using the front facing camera of the Moto G5 and the audio is also through that. So you get a pretty good idea. This is in low light. Overall, a good camera for everyday shots. Now, here is one major build difference between the G5 Plus and this. In the G5, you can remove its back cover, wherein on the G5 Plus, you can't. The back houses two SIM slots and a separate micro SD card slot for expanding storage. And a removable battery. Nice! Both slots support 4G OLT and yes, I have tested it. You can use Geo on either slot 1 or slot 2. Hey, hi! Hello, Moto! <laughs> Yeah, the Moto G5. I know, I know. <laughs> so, what's up? Mm, waiting for the weekend. <laughs> so, how's my voice? Yeah, voice is clear. How's mine? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. So... Yeah, I know. I have to go out from Matt to do it for, right? Exactly. Can you do it? <laughs> yeah, sure. I'll do it. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Yeah, it's from Matt to do it yeah, there's a big difference between, you know, Geo and this network. See, the voice, you know, yeah, as expected, Geo is volty, so, you know, the, the audio quality is, is pretty good. But this is kind of okay. Okay. So, how's my voice? Yeah, I can see that too. Yeah, voice is clear. On storage, you get 16 GB inbuilt, out of which only 9 GB is free to use. Decent read and write speeds. Since adaptive storage is supported, you can move or install apps to the SD card. That's good! OTG is also supported. Coming to battery, it comes with a 2800 mAh removable battery. What? What? Please tell me it's a dream. Uh, Motorola, are you crazy? I know you will say battery is removable and stuff. Yeah, but given that technology is changing so fast, I won't consider it as a big plus personally. On the backup, to give you an idea, starting my day at 9am with moderate calls, gaming, work stuff like emails, video streaming and frequent social media etc. I was able to end up with 4% charge at around 7.30pm. To give you an idea, 30 minutes of video streaming on 4G cellular data consumes 5% and the same on Wi-Fi consumes 6%. Continuous asphalt 8 gameplay for 15 minutes consumes approximately 9%. Good that it has this rapid charging where 0 to 100 percent takes 1 hour 35 minutes with the cable and adapter at the box. Overall, given the competition, 2800 image battery is not something you'd expect for what you pay. Coming to general performance, gaming, sensors, and heating. On the hardware, it is powered by the Snapdragon 430 SoC octa-core chip clocked at 1.4 GHz, bundled with Adreno 505 GPU and 3 GB RAM. The 430 is not a powerful chip, however, in my everyday use, I did not face any issues with the UI. It's responsive. Multitasking experience was decent, thanks to the plain close-to-stock Android no good that runs the device. Yes, also comes with Google Personal Assistant. I'm hungry. Within 1 kilometers. You do get a bit of Moto tweak that enables nice features that I personally find handy like the twist to launch camera, chop to activate flashlight, swipe to swing the screen, flip to mute, split screen, Moto display that shows your notification when you pick up the device by activating the display, etc. You get built-in FM radio which works with or without earphones. No dual apps or wireless display support, disappointing but you can do that with third-party apps. Though not meant for high graphics gaming, I did try with Nova 3, Asphalt 8, 
they trigger two and gods of rome surprisingly device played it all well but with minor frame drops here and there so casual level gaming is fine don't expect a super gaming experience given that the screen is small and the hardware you get is not something to boast about on the sensors you get the axiometer light proximity gyro but sadly no compass like the g5 plus insane unlike the g5 plus this does not have an fc coming to heating on regular use i had no issues but when i pushed it hard with continuous gaming for 40 minutes it did touch 41 42 degrees in indoor and while recording video in outdoor for three minutes it was at 40 degrees max being metal back you will feel the warmness as long as you don't push the device hard with prolonged gaming you should be fine so what I think about this device? Well, for me at this price point, I don't find a solid reason to push this up given that competitor smartphones have better offerings. Consumers in India are more towards value for money when it comes to smartphones. Yes, brand value matters, but not at such a compromise. This device should be priced under 10,000 in my opinion. Small battery, no compass, average speaker, less inbuilt storage, no LED light, okay specs, Hmm. The only major advantage is the expandable storage and an above average camera. Lenovo's own K6 Power which has similar specs and a large battery is priced at 10,000 rupees and the Redmi 3S and 3S Prime even lesser. If you shell out a little extra, the Redmi Note 4 on a 6X are better options. Hope you found this video helpful. Hmm. Hope you found this video helpful to know the Lenovo G5 what you think about this device. Do let me know in the comments below and if you have any specific questions about this device, do let me know that also and I'll try to help you the best I can. Please do appreciate the efforts that I've taken for you guys by clicking on the thumbs up button and make sure to click the red subscribe button along with the bell icon if you already haven't done it for more awesome tech videos. I'll catch you in the next one. Until then. Leave me down! I'll ask them to follow you on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram.